Thank you, Sam. Well, Quinnipiac University is well known for its nationally recognized polls and hockey programs, but tucked away in Hamden are a group of talented students who are working on something big. And joining us this morning, we have three people, Crystal Bryan, Sarah Dietrich, and Ryan Devaney, representing the Theater for Community Program at Quinnipiac University. Thank you all for being here this morning. I know it's very early. So the first thing, tell me a little bit about the university's Theater for Community. Um, we began theater for community, I think, in 2004, and instead of just theater, it was theater for community, because what we do is create plays. We make them, we buy it, we you know, actually do them, but we do them with community, and community in New Haven, community in Nicaragua, community wow. in Ireland, wow. community so in Louisiana. All all there over. are no boundaries exactly. to the community you work with. Exactly. So, exactly. I, and any of you can chime in on this, tell us about the show that you're going to be performing, the name, who it's by, and a little bit of the story behind it all for people who may not be familiar. All right, I'll set just a couple, of, and then I'm going to ask both of them, but um, Horton Foote, I have written books about Horton Foote, I have done his play in Los Angeles and in Connecticut um, and the, nor the nine plays cycle, his nine plays, he wrote after his mother and father passed away and it's a very interesting group of plays and the fact that his daughter Hallie Foote is actually coming to meet with students and also talk to an audience now that he's passed away is quite amazing. Now yeah. did she get wind of this or did you guys contact her? I've, How did that all come about? I've, I've known her for years because oh, wow. I've known H Horton Foote for years. I went to his house in Texas and wrote, read all of his poems and all of his uh, letters and everything, and I've known Hallie for years as well. So you have a personal connection to him. Now, the play mm -hmm. is called 1918, correct? And exactly. what is the premise behind it all? Um, it's the First World War, and it's the flu in the United States. Right. So people are dying from both. And in the middle of that, with so many people dying in this small town in Texas, they're able to go forward, and it's quite amazing. It's happening in the world today now, too. Wow, certainly, yeah, exactly. a real-life event. Now, right. you both are in the play. Uh, what has it uh, been like for you both to be part of all of this? And tell me a little bit about your characters, if you want to go first. Uh, well, I'm Horace Robodeau. Um, I'm the male lead of the show. Um, as an incoming fre or as a freshman at Quinnipiac, it's been um, totally just very welcoming. Everyone came in with open arms, as well as the senior over here that I'm luckily working with. Um, <laughs> it's um, not that old, trust me. You know, everyone has very, been very uh, helpful with everything that I've been going through, and this year has been just amazing, right. uh, every experience that I've been able to work on. And what about for you? Um, my name is Sarah Dietrich. I'm playing Elizabeth Robodeau, which is Horace's um, wife, and she is the female lead of the play. In this play, she faces a lot of loss. Um, she has to hold a family together, even as it's falling apart in these terrible times. It's about, um, it's about the conversations that go on in our daily lives, and they hide the deep insecurities and the deep fears that we all have. Now, what is this like for you guys? Because you know, going to college is certainly a lot of work, and here you both are, you know, doing that. I imagine, and then in tandem with all of it, you're you're taking part in this <laughs> play. What is what has that been like for you guys? Um, it's a little odd as an outgoing senior because this is my last show at Quinnipiac <laughs> and it's honestly it's a pleasure to work with all of the incoming, um, the rising students I should say, and seeing how they grow, remembering what it was to grow and kind of leaving something behind even as you go forward. It's been a lot of research in the hard work department. You have to, it's a, it's a play that takes place in a certain time period, so you need to know everything about that time period. There's a lot of stuff you need to know. You need to take on the part. Mm -hmm. Now, real quick, before we get to the sneak peek of the performance, um, when are the shows, the dates, and where are they going to be? Um, it's Thursday through Sunday, and so it's April 16th, 17th, 18th, and 19th, and it's in Buckman Theater, which is in the middle of Quinnipiac University, right on uh, uh, Whitney Avenue, and then you go right into the university. And so Buckman Theater. All right, very exactly. good. So you guys are getting ready. Not a lot of time left until <laughs> showtime. And speaking of which, you both are going to give us a sneak peek real quick. So we'll step off stage here, so to speak. You guys take it away. Here now right. is a, a sneak peek of 1918. Elizabeth. Did you wake up again? Are you still hungry? I can heat up a bowl of soup. There's half a bowl left. I, I'm not hungry. Try to get back to sleep now. I'm not sleepy. Where am I? You're at home. The doctor says you're ever so much better, but uh, there's really nothing to worry about now. The doctor says everything is behind you now. What is? The flu. D -d Did I have the flu? Yes. Don't you remember? I remember something about it, but I thought I had gotten better. You and the baby got sick. That's right. You had 
the flu and then you got better. Then I took it and the baby took it. And you were waiting on us and you just keeled over, fainted right on the floor. I was so scared. The doctor said you had gotten up too soon and tried to do before you should and had a relapse and this time you were so sick. I couldn't get up to wait on you because I was still sick. Brother came over then, he never did get it. And he called Aunt Virgie as mom and papa were both in bed still then. And she nursed us until I got my strength back. Where, where is auntie now? She went home. Don't you remember? The doctor said you were out of danger now and she told you goodbye. And Horace, Horace, don't. Please don't cry. It's all behind you now. Terrible as it was, it's all behind you now. I thought I was dying. I remember now. I thought I was, I thought I was dying. And I, I thought I was going to lose you forever. And I wanted so badly to live. The wall's over, isn't it? Yes. Everyone's out in the courthouse celebrating. The band's playing. I don't know anymore what I have been told and what I haven't been told. Your memory will be good as new in a day or so. I'm going to have a baby, Horace. When? In about six months. The doctor can't be too sure. Well, that's something. Aren't you pleased? I sure am. Are you? Yes. All right, very good. There we go, a sneak peek. Nice job, guys. You both are ready. You're ready for the show. And speaking of which, there are the details right there on the screen. It's April 16th through the 18th at 7.30, and then April 19th at 2 p.m. And we should mention ticket prices are there as well. It's $10 for students and seniors, as well as $15 for general admission. All of this happening at the Buckman Theater. And, of course, we will have all of that information on our website. All you have to do is go to WTNH.com, click the on-air tab, and pull down to the Good Morning Connecticut weekend section.